All right, so while I'm waiting for my clay slabs to set up, I'm gonna show you a few textures that will be really helpful. So remember I said there are three main types of textures. There's stamping, carving, and attaching. So carving, there are a couple ways you can carve. You can carve or make textures with anything you can think of. Uh, kitchen tools are really great things to make textures with. Um, anything you can find around your house that you can press into clay can make a texture. So, but these tools are called loop tools. I have some bigger loop tools and I have some miniature loop tools. And I really like the miniature loop tools for really fine details. So, the thing about textures is they're the most successful when you have a variety of textures in your piece. So, that's why for this project we want a minimum of two. But I just realized before I do that, there's one thing that you always need to do before you texture. Is you need to take a metal rib and we're going to take off the canvas texture. So just the canvas texture from rolling our clay out on this. We want that to go away. So I'm just going to take a metal rib and just scrape the surface of my clay just to get it a little bit more smooth. All right, now I'm going to take my loop tool and I'm just going to carve some simple lines. I'm going to make them different lengths though, so some will be short, some will be long. And I'll go in and take out the little pieces that came up. So the thing about variety is think about even varieties within one texture. So if I'm carving lines, I could carve thick lines and then I could carve some thin lines next to it because that's going to change the whole design of your piece and you want to make it interesting for anyone who's looking at your piece you want to give them lots of interesting little details to look at it's making your piece more sophisticated giving it more detail more information um, it's just what makes an exciting art piece so that's carving you can also do stamping now i have lots of different tools you can use for stamping I have a lot of these rollers that all you have to do is just press into the clay firmly because you only get one shot and you're just going to roll your clay forward and you get a really nice design. Now the thing about these is that they tend to stretch the clay out a little bit so it's really important not to press super duper duper hard so that your clay changes shape especially when you're doing your slab bases because it's going to make it really hard to put your piece together. So make sure you apply enough pressure but not too much pressure. All right, I also have these little rubber masks that have some textures on them. So what you can do is you can lay them in the clay and then you can take one of these wooden rollers and just gently press the mat into the clay, not too hard, just enough to where it sticks down in the clay and pull it away and you'll have texture. Same thing, I also have some lace patterns like with this, you can press that into the clay, roll it on. And then the other texture is attaching. So with what I tell my ceramic students is I want you to think about not only the textures you're carving and stamping and attaching, but think about how can all these textures work together. So think about if you're doing a bunch of floral patterns, think about what can you attach in your texture that would help tie it even more together. So if I, you know, am carving a bunch of lines, maybe I could attach something linear that would look really nice with my, with my carved line texture. So whatever it is that you want to attach, some important things to remember are make sure you don't attach anything gigantic and super thick to the piece. Because if you attach a big old square like that, it's too thick and it's not going to stay on the piece. It may explode later in the kiln. It's just too big. It needs to be no thicker than your pinky. So you can make little squares or little circles or drops or whatever it is you want to attach, but make sure it's not too thick and too gigantic. So say I just want to attach some little lines of clay. So to make to attach things in clay, I need to score my clay. So I'm scratching my clay. And then I'm going to scratch the thing that I'm attaching. Now this is really important because you don't want your pieces to fall off after you've attached them because that's no fun. So I'm going to take a little bit of this liquid clay. It's in these buckets like this. It's called slip. Um, and so you just attach a little bit of liquid clay to your piece where you've scored it. And you're going to press it down gently 
but not like don't smash it. You're gonna press it down gently onto your piece and then to tell if it's really stuck or not, you just have to wiggle it. If it wiggles and it doesn't come right off, you're probably okay. So anytime you attach, always make sure that you um, slip and score because that's gonna be really important making sure it stays on your piece. So now that I have some pieces of clay that are more set up, I'm gonna be ready to start putting my piece together. So one more thing you're going to need is you're also going to need to have an extra piece of clay for the base of your uh, pot or sculpture, whatever it may be. So I've got an extra slab right here and I'm gonna get my pieces out of my bag. So the difference between my really soft pieces and my leather hard pieces, which is the second stage of dryness and clay. So here's my really soft piece. Notice it cannot stand up. It is so soft. You don't wanna to try to put this together because it's gonna collapse and be a big mess. Instead, what you want is you want pieces that are still bendable, but notice it's not as floppy as the piece I just showed you was. So I've got my um, templates here. I've got two of them, and I'm gonna get them ready. So the textures, you wanna make sure that uh, any carving or attaching, you want to do that after the piece is already put together. But for stamping, we want to go ahead and do that while the clay is softer. Because as we put the piece together, it's going to start to dry up a little more and it's really hard to stamp on a vase anyway. So go ahead and stamp now. So the first thing before I stamp is I'm going to get my canvas texture off. So I'm just going to go through and scrape my piece down. Just like that. Okay, so I'm going to use, oops, sorry, wrong one. I'm going to use this uh, diamond texture. And so when we put the pieces together, you're gonna see in a little bit, the pieces actually are, the edges are gonna get pretty messy. So we're gonna have to go back and kind of hide those and make them really nice later. So any stamping you do, especially on the edges, is going to get lost and you're gonna have to put something else there. So I'm gonna stamp mostly in the middle of my piece right here. So I'm gonna press down and just roll straight up. So I've got some diamonds going down this side and I'm going to attach stuff all around the side so I'm not too worried about this over here. I'm gonna do the same thing to my second piece. So I'm gonna get my roller Gonna go straight up the middle, nice even pressure. There we go. Okay, so I've got two pieces with this diamond texture on it. So now I'm gonna start by flipping them over. And I'm going to score, so I don't wanna score the top because the top's gonna be open. But I want to score all of the sides. So I'm just gonna scratch all of the sides. Now it's okay to scratch a lot because you know, we're gonna put this back together anyways. And what scoring does is scoring helps loosen up the clay and especially when you're adding moisture through the slip, then it's gonna help the clay really open up and stick back together with the other piece. So that's why we slip and score. All right, so I'm scoring all the sides. Okay, they're good to go. Now I'm going to take some slip and I, I'm just gonna put it on one side because we're putting my pieces together anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's on both sides or not. Okay, now this is the tricky part. You may wanna get a friend to help you. It's good to do this in pairs. So I'm gonna start by putting my pieces together, kind of not really pinching them just yet. At the bottom, I'm just gonna start squeezing the clay right here at the base, just to make sure it's really stuck. And then I'm going to bend, so, okay, there you, go. you can see me starting to bend the clay, because we're taking two flat pieces and we're making a three-dimensional shape. So I want the clay to bend just a little bit. 
So you may have some unevenness. A little bit of unevenness is okay. A lot of things are fixable in clay. As long as your piece isn't falling over, we can probably fix it. Okay, so see my tops right here are not even. Okay, so I'm trying to puff my piece out. So I'm attaching. I don't want to squeeze my pot to get to death, but I do want to make sure my sides are really stuck together. So I'm just kind of gently pushing the sides together. And I want to start mostly at the bottom. So my piece is kind of together, and now I'm going to go back and really start to make sure. So I'm just kind of taking my clay very gently. Now if you squeeze your clay too much, you're going to end up with edges that look like that. You don't want that. Just kind of gently push the sides together, and we can go through and clean up a lot later, but just be gentle, but also make sure your piece isn't going to fall apart on you. Okay, great. So my piece is pretty together. I'm kind of smoothing down the outside edges just so it just is really stuck before I start really messing with it too much. I'm gonna make sure the bottom is rounded. So this is why we wanted to leave space at the bottom because we want our piece to be able to stand. So the next thing I'm gonna do, and now this kind of depends on the way you've made your piece, but the best way to make sure your piece is really solid is to reinforce it from the inside. So I can't reach all the way into here, but I can reach the insides here and a little bit here. So I'm gonna take a coil of soft clay, I'm just gonna make like a little snake like that, and I'm gonna put it inside as many of the, of the cracks where we put the clay together, I'm gonna to put it inside as best I can. And then I'm gonna take, you can take your wooden tool, the rounded end, or you can just use your finger and you're just gonna smooth the clay in there. Now remember the inside is just as important as the outside, so make sure that you make it nice and pretty. And if something comes undone, just put it back together. If your clay is leather hard, it shouldn't be falling apart too much on you. If your clay is too soft, you'll be able to tell if it's like falling over everywhere. Okay, so now I'm going to reinforce this side. I'm pushing the clay into the cracks right there so that it's really reinforced and it's not going to um, fall apart quite as easily. It helps prevent cracks too come showing up later on. Okay, so now I'm just reinforcing the walls. And now once I've gotten everything all together and your shape is pretty well set. I want to go ahead and put a base. So all you need is a little scrap piece of slab and I'm going to take my pot and I'm just going to measure right up to the base of the pot like this and I'm going to score the bottom after I cut it out. I'm going to score the bottom like this and I'm going to score the bottom of this, just like that. I'm going to put my slip on there and I'm going to put my base on. So make sure you're really confident in your shape. And then all I'm going to do is just take the base, any extra clay or just the soft clay, you just want to do the same thing as what you did up at the top. Just kind of blend it in, make it really nice and smooth and pretty. Okay, so that's the basic part of what we're going to be doing. Now I'm going to go ahead and start adding some other textures. So, you know, we talked about having these rough edges. There are a couple things you can do. Now we can't stamp anymore, but I can take my metal rib and I can start scraping down the edges, making sure there's no holes, there's no cracks and just starting to smooth them out. So this would be a good place if you wanted to, if you wanted to attach some shapes, this would be a good place to do it. So I could make more diamond shapes if I want to, and I could make diamond shapes, 
and attach them on to my piece. I could attach them on the edges like that, or I could attach them throughout my diamond pattern. That would be a really good way to use the shapes. Or I could also carve different types of lines going throughout my piece here. Now, if you notice, this piece kind of got a little flat. So all I'm gonna do is take my wooden tool, since I can't reach down there anymore, I'm just gonna press the clay out a little bit with my wooden tool. And notice my rim is really uneven right here. So all I'm gonna do is take my needle tool and just start carving it down. There you go. So all I'm gonna do from here on out is I'm gonna be cleaning up my piece. I'm gonna be adding textures, um, stamping, carving, attaching, whatever you can think to do. Um, try it out. You could also try adding some handles onto your piece just through rolling slabs and attaching them. Or you could add shapes as your handles. Um, you could have decorative designs to the top because this doesn't have to be straight. You could carve some sort of angle or line out of this piece as well. Well. So the decoration and design is totally up to you, but I just wanted to hopefully give you enough information that you can get started on this project and really come up with something fun and creative.